Hey everyone, this is Gary Kay, and I have a special video edition of my Rants and Rays podcast today. I'm joined by two Cenex professionals. We're going to talk about sort of what Cenex is doing to help the commercial AV market right now. We're in the middle, unfortunately, of COVID-19. I have Joe uh, Patillo, Patil, did I pronounce that right? Patillo? Patillo. That right? Okay, Patillo, Patillo, who's the VP of Services, and Kurt Nesbitt, who is the VP of Design and Support Services. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me today. Great to be with you, Gary. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate to be together in these circumstances, but um, Cenex is one of those companies that's actually helped the uh, AV community in a, in a big way with lots of different kinds of things, both both with uh, product availability and services and even volunteer support. Uh, you've been a big support in your own community there locally and nationally. Um, and some of our familiar uh, listeners, obviously, have a lot of listeners on here that are commercial AV integrators, um, may not be familiar with all the uh, service offerings that you have. Um, so uh, I'd love for you to kind of review, um, you know, what you're offering right now specifically for the commercial AV market. So uh, sure. you want to start, Kurt? Yeah, I'll start because it kind of starts with the, the pre-sales engineering uh, responsibilities that my team has. And, and so we've got uh, comprehensive AV design services available to the integrators around surveillance and signage, and collaboration, and uh, even newer technologies like the, the sensors for uh, temperatures and such that uh, you know, some of the cameras have, have capabilities of, of doing today. Um, the other thing that I think could be very valuable to the integrators are the ability for us to pair the complementary uh, technologies to the, the, the traditional AV products. So, you know, obviously the network is kind of literally the backbone of, of most AV solutions today. So we can help certainly design the network there uh, add the appropriate software. Uh, a lot of the surveillance solutions right now can, can generate a lot of, of storage needs. So uh, if you need to integrate more, uh, you, know, you know, conventional storage into the solutions, uh, connect you to the cloud for, for cloud storage as an example. And then lastly, you know, something like a 5G uh, connection for, uh, for remote or edge kinds of solutions. Um, so we can help design, you know, the, the complete solution for for the folks and, uh, and they can leave the pre-sale you know, responsibilities to us. Then we hand off and, and work very well with uh, Joe's team uh, helping to design the, the, the implementation services. So Joe, I'll let you explain. All right. where, 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 tell me where you start, where, where, what, what, you know, what happens when Kurt's finished with his team and where you start, Joe? Yeah, so Kirk's team, Kirk's team of engineers will put together the, you know, the bomb, you know, the bill of materials, you know, the solution required to solve the you know, customer's need. And then it comes over to our team and then we will evaluate, work with the reseller and end user customer to design an installation plan. So that installation plan you know, you know, can be as little or as much as the customer needs help with, but it's including you know, all the installation, cabling, uh, you know, uh, programming, you know, all the uh, DSP programming that goes along with this and the installation and even post install support. So, you know, we help customers, you know, whether it's locally one site or we can help them extend their reach. If you're trying to do the same thing for like a national install of, you know, 500 locations, it needs to be the same. We have the project management uh, that goes along with the services, you know, to make sure that everything's cookie cutter and you know, follows, and follows along, they all turn out the same. I mean, it's interesting because services, you know, tend to be in, in the integrators don't look at services as product, but interestingly enough, a lot of times services end up being more profitable than the product uh, was in the initial installation because you have that recurring revenue opportunity there. And so you've talked about a wide range of uh, services here, and this is more relevant than ever, uh, I think. Uh, in the current business climate and with so many uh, customers operating at a reduced workforce, how can Cenex fill the gaps through services like pre-sales, uh, installation, integration support, or post-sales support when, uh, you know, can you do that when they don't have the, the teams to do it? I mean, some of these teams have actually had to be furloughed because they're waiting for the jobs to come along and maybe they've gotten another okay. job or maybe they, you know, some states have regulations where you can't work but so many hours or you lose the opportunity to get the benefits. How right. does Cenex deal with that? Well, we're living it, uh, it to the fullest, really. The, the COVID has had a, a real big effect on, on us and our engineering teams. Um, and it's because I think a lot of, of integrators have, have you know, had some furloughs. And so one of the easier things to outsource is probably the pre-sales side of the, the house. So uh, we've seen a, about a 56 or so percent increase year over year in terms of and through like the, the March through May time frame in terms of uh, number of designs that our engineers are called up on to work for our integrators. So 
you know, and we're seeing the same thing in, in the collaboration space as well. And so, uh, you know, though that is definitely something that, uh, that I think is, has peaked because of the, the uh, furloughs that have no doubt hit some of the integrators out there. Uh, the other thing that, that's been interesting here through COVID is the, you know, the COVID solution that touched on it a little bit, but, you know, thermal kiosks, you know, to be able to scan for temperatures and such. Uh, we've actually implemented that at Cenex in our, in our lobbies uh, for everybody coming through, not just guests, but uh, our own employees. And then occupancy management is, has gotten to be, especially in like retails and such, uh, gotten to be a, a viable solution. So using surveillance with some analytics uh, to be able to provide some occupancy management kinds of solutions. So, you know, and then lastly, uh, you know, we're doing a, a fair amount of training and, uh, and I'll touch on that more, but uh, Joe, I'm, I think you've had the same update. We have, you know, I'll, I'll echo uh, Kurt's statements there. You know, we, we help our reseller partners extend their reach. So, you know, a lot of times, unfortunately, you know, they're having furlough situations, but you know, they, you know, they can still lean on us to be the feet on the street and have the national reach to go out there. And, you know, going back to your last statement, it does create a lot of stickiness with your customer. It allows you to, you know, to be there, you know, when the installation occurs and remain relevant to your customer. And, you know, this, this AV is just, it's, part of a much wider solution that we're seeing now that's reaching out to smart city and iot solutions so it's it's a good way to remain relevant with your customer by com, you know you know completing the full life cycle of you know the, the, the design that kirk does the install and then the you know the continued maintenance and assistance downstream you know when the customer needs you know inevitably inevitably is going to need some help in the future well you know it's what's kind of one one thing you brought up kurt that's kind of interesting to me is that these design engineers that used to work at these integration companies that have unfortunately had to be furloughed, they left and all of a sudden new products are being integrated that, that the integrator never actually dealt with before. Right. right. Like, the, like the idea of occupancy sensors, we use them every once in a while on rooms, but not building or facility wide on a network, right? We were right. just interfacing with a collaboration board or these thermo sensor products where you're measuring the temperature of everyone coming into the facility and then having to store that data and then decide what to do with that data because some of that data, by the way, is illegal to store certain ways. And your team has deals with not just the FERPA and, but, and HIPAA laws, but also some of the ethical issues in and around that. But even when these team, even when we are hopefully soon out of this situation where we're being furloughed, you now have this expertise for this new kind of, system that's really not as you said joe really not av but it's on the backbone of av because we mm -hmm. are the ones that are the front line to interface all the hardware in a, in a facility right not everyone goes to a computer screen a lot of times you're you're interfacing with a room right you're starting up a room and that's when you're using the occupancy sensor right um, so this is kind of an interesting this is an interesting thing that i hadn't thought about is that all of a sudden we're providing something that wasn't ever being provided before so we're you're going to have to go back and sort of teach these design engineers. So have you thought about the training aspect of this long term? Because you're going to have to re, re these tra these uh, systems designers into doing this stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Kirk. Yeah. Um, our AV engineers do a, a fair amount of training that's kind of been in, in their in their heritage. And uh, this is more of the same. So, you know, what we try to do is not just train on the technology, but, you know, what are the drivers of it? You know, where, where can you maybe get funding for some of these solutions? And how do you, how do you, you know, take these new solutions? What's the, the value prop to the business uh, for them? So we, we take that very seriously. And we've got a series of trainings going on. We've got some going on with, with you, Gary, that I know has been vertical focused uh, around healthcare, education. Um, we did uh, the speaking engagement or training with the engineers led for PSNI, uh, that group. And uh, it was all COVID, work from home, and then around the analytics kinds of uh, tools that we've just been talking about. And, uh, you know, we, we also uh, were AVIXA certified to, uh, to lead those classes, but uh, COVID kind of shut us out on that, not be able to get together to do those live training. Yeah, I think you were the first outsourced uh, AVIXA CTS certification program, which we were indeed. Yeah, yes. which I, which which obviously I'm sure it'll come back around before the end of the year. Right. Um, but but let me ask you another little piece that you sort of touched on. Um, I'm not sure which is the best to answer this question. So let's say an integrator gets into the case where a customer has this opportunity, and there may be CARES Act money that's available for this um, that they don't even know about. Do you have a resource that they can call on to kind of say, hey, by the way, this is covered under the CARES Act, and you could sort of deal with it that way. 
I think that would be covered by our GovSolve group. GovSolve group. Yeah, yeah. So that's so we're now so you have Visual Solve for commercial AV or you know pro AV stuff. You have the Collab Solve for collaboration and GovSolve for the government. And in fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I actually talked to one of your GovSolve representatives. So you would you would handle that in the sense that they wouldn't have to go out of house, even though that's GovSolve. It's a different team within Senex. Yeah, we would clear in the right folks to, to to assist and help find the you know appropriate funds available. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are a lot of solutions that that requires you know, you know, partnering within with the Cinex organization, whether it's financing, you know, and or you know, the GovSolve team that, that's aware of the different uh, you know, funds that are out there to be to be tapped. And that was kind of part of our messaging around the education training that we did here recently. Yeah. You know, that, yeah, we had an education day today. In fact, uh, actually, if you missed that, you can actually go watch it because. Uh, uh, you can actually go to the the launch website and actually go watch the pre-recorded material um, for both the healthcare day and the education day, which you referred to, Kurt. Yep. Um, so, what's the next step for the for interested listeners? Where do they go? I know that we're going to put some links in the description of this podcast. Um, who do they email? What's the website they go to? I would suggest keep it simple and uh, mail your email your opportunities to Visual Solve. That's Visual S O L V without the E on the end at Cinex.com or CollabSolve uh, at Cinex.com. And there are teams of, of folks that will uh, address you know, those, those needs or interests and, uh, and get it going in the right hands, including the engineering teams you know, on those as well as the, the product management teams. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate both of you joining me. Uh, Kurt, Joe, thank you very much for your time today. I know that there's a lot going on. It seems like ever since this work from home thing's been going on, I've been working harder right. from home than I was actually in the Same office. Here. Uh, I don't leave to work out like I used to. I don't have midday lunches like I used to. Uh, but uh, let's hope that uh, we're on the right track. And uh, thanks for what you're doing. Uh, thanks for joining me today. And of course, Cenex corporate wide is at cenex.com. Uh, so don't forget you can check them out, including GovSolve as well. So uh, thanks, uh, Kurt. Thanks, Joe. And uh, everyone, thanks for listening. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.